Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter and this is lecture video 35. We are in section 9.1 part 3. So last time we continued our discussion of hypothesis test for the mean mu, the population mean mu, when sigma is known. And we will continue with that section now. I hope you enjoy this pre-recorded video. So by the way, I will give you H1 stated in words in the problems that I assign to you, so uh, that I make up myself, okay? I create. So the book doesn't do this, so you'll have to figure out what it is because it will be in the problem. It will be stated in the problem somewhere, so you need to find it and use that in the uh, space number two here. Oops. All right. So let's do an example. Rosie is an older sheepdog in Montana who gets regular checkups from her veterinarian owner. So her owner is her veterinarian, okay? Let X be a random variable that represents Rosie's resting heart rate in beats per minute. Now this is discrete. You can't have 1.5 beats per minute unless you average, okay? So the beats per minute are discrete. Um, the vet knows that X is normally distributed with a sigma equal to 12. So I'm not gonna say normally distributed, I should have said approximately, because it's discrete, it can't be normally distributed, but what you don't know is that we can estimate, uh, we can use the normal distribution uh, to uh, estimate discrete distributions. But we're not gonna talk about, I don't think we'll talk about how to do that, we might. Um, it's, a, it's not hard, but it is a little, uh, it may be a little confusing for you. So we're going to say that this is approximately normally distributed with a variance 12, 12 beats per minute. The vet checked the Merck Veterinary Manual and found that this breed of dog has an average or mean uh, beats per minute resting heart rate of 115. For six weeks, um, the vet owner took Rosie's resting heart rate, and the mean was 105.0. So we want to test the claim and see that Rosie's average resting heart rate is less than 115 uh, beats per minute. So this right here that I am circling is H1, okay? And we're going to test it at 95% confidence level, so C equals 0.95, okay? Now, so the first step is to write out the null hypothesis, and so H0 is, notice I put a colon here, so H0 colon mu is equal to 115. We're testing against 115. So in this problem, they actually said mu is equal to 115. Sometimes they don't. Okay. So mu is 115 beats per minute. And this says less than, less than. So we put a less than sign for H1, our our claim or alternative hypothesis, less than 115. You'll notice that these values are the same. Okay. Now let's do our test statistic. Since we know or assume that um, sigma is equal to 12, we're going to use the test statistic that has sigma in it, and that is Z observed. And I like this form of the uh, test statistic because it's easier to put in my calculator. So this, I please write out the formula. 
when you're doing homework, write out the formula and then plug in the values. So, so uh, in this case, we took uh, six weeks. So n is equal to six. We have sigma is equal to 12. And it says x bar is equal to 105.0 right here. Okay. So, and the and here mu is 115. So we plug in um, x bar, which is, we plug in n, which is 6, and then we plug in x bar, then we plug in mu, we always subtract these, and then we plug in sigma on the bottom. And this gives us a z-score rounded to two decimal places of negative 2.04. So the next thing I'm going to do is calculate my p-value. So I draw a chart with x bar on here, and I put mu right in the middle, which is 115, and then I plot 105. Well, 105 is less than uh, 115, so it goes over on the uh, left, and I need to find, um, so in this case, my claim is less than, so I need to find the p-value is this area, and that is going to be uh, the probability that z is less than negative 2.04. And you'll notice that once I calculate the z-score, I do the same thing. I drew another picture that says z observed I plot that, that's negative 2.04, so the mean is zero, and I need to find this probability here, and it is the same thing that x bar is less than 105, which is what I have in my for this drawing. This is the probability that x bar is less than 105. It's equal to the probability that z is less than negative 2.04. Let's go to our z table here and find negative 2.04. I already have it lined up on the bottom with a negative 2.0, so I need to come over to the 04, whoops, the 04, and I need to find uh, down here 0.0207. All right. Oops. Every time I switch to a different uh, document, I forget that I have to choose my pen or it doesn't know what to do. 0 0.0204. Now I need to switch back. 0207. So that's the p value. Now, the critical region is always that the p-value is less than alpha. Remember that alpha is 1 minus c, which was 1 minus 0.95 for this problem, which is 0.05. So now I plug in 0.05 for alpha, and I plug in the p-value for the p-value. So 0.0207, and I put a question mark here. Why? Because this is what we're testing. Is this statement true? Yes, true statement, which is my rejection. This is the rejection criteria. And so if it's true, I'm going to reject. So my decision is to reject H naught. Now I need to write the conclusion. There is, because I reject, sufficient evidence to support the claim that Rosie's Rest, average resting heart rate
resting heart rate is less than 115 beats per minute. So all of this is H1. And this is reject. We rejected H0, so we go with is. So we re reject H0, that means we support the claim Yes, we support the claim. So, so that is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Yeah, H1, not HI. <laughs> okay. At, oops, let me turn back to green at a 95% confidence level from a simple random sample of size n equals 6. Okay, it's important for your reader to know that you did this study using a sample size of 6. Most of the time this conclusion statement is all that the public gets. So it needs to be, it's really important that it, it be clear. So use this like little uh, format that I've given you here uh, every time you write a conclusion and uh, it will make sense, okay? So that is how we do hypothesis testing. Um, so I hope you have a uh, I hope this video has clarified how to do this, and in the next video we'll do some more examples and then uh, show how we do a hypothesis test when we do not know sigma. Well, that's the end of this video. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. I am very happy to help you, as always. If you can't do that, then you're welcome to email me. But when you email me, I need two things from you. The first is a picture of the problem so that I can help you through email. I may not have the problem available to me. If you don't send me the problem, then you're going to have to wait until I get back to my computer and get that problem pulled up. So please send me a picture of the problem. The second thing you need to send me is a picture of your work so far. This helps me understand how you're approaching the problem and may help me or will help me uh, help you faster and better. So I hope you will stay safe and take care of yourself. Until next time, we'll see you then.